We're going to get started in a few seconds here. So up, up next, we're going to have Regina Aguilera and Andrea Culbertson. I'm curious, for, how many people went to the poster session yesterday? Raise your hand. How many people saw the ancestral food, food wheel and spun it? Yeah, we have a, I have a little piece of it here. I thought it was a really cool thing that they had going on. So they're going to tell us more about the project that they've been doing. Okay. Good morning. That's kind of weak. Good morning. Good morning. All right, now we're alive. My name is Regina Aguilera. I'm with the Project Native Paleo, and I'm really excited to be here being a part of Ancestral Health Symposium this weekend. So uh, my Project Native Paleo is... Tess had asked how many of you had been there yesterday. So I'm just starting off, so I don't have, where's my clicker? There we go. Okay. So this is something from a, a leader, an Anishinaab leader, Winona LaDuke. The recovery of the people is tied to the recovery of the food, since food itself is medicine, not only for the body, but also for the soul and the spiritual connection to history, ancestors, and the land. So as Native people, we feel very closely to that and to the land. Native paleo, we've called functional nutrition and fitness. Again, I'm Regina. I'm a licensed acupuncturist. I'm hailing from Southern California. My tribe is Yaqui. My tribe is bordering Arizona and Mexico. My grandfather used to say that I didn't cross the border, the border crossed me, because he freely moved back across back in the 1900s. Andy, or Andy Culbertson sitting here to my right, uh, she's also very much a component of Native Paleo. She's helped with a lot of the artistic design, collaborator, and just a colleague as mine, so I'm really excited to have her here with me today. Uh, she, she did the poster presentation and does beautiful artwork and has a, a registered dietitian as well. So again, so many, many of you saw our ancestral our poster session yesterday. So again, how many of you spun that wheel? A few of you spun that wheel. Anybody get a poster? Got a few posters? Okay, great. Again, that was our sister talk getting ready for us today. So thinking about local foods, I'd like to have a little audience participation to get us started. How many of you have eaten a food, an ancestral food, a pre-contact, pre-agricultural food from the area where you lived? If you have, please stand up. Second part of this, if that food was something that you hunted or gathered yourself, stay standing. Oh, look at that. Nice. How many of you have hunted that food? Well, I have some hunters. Awesome. How many of you are gatherers? Beautiful. All right. Awesome. Okay, you can go ahead and have a seat. Thank you. So what is Native Paleo? Our vision is to serve indigenous communities with creative and culturally meaningful wellness education in order to reclaim optimal lifestyle balancing using ancestral health practices. So myself, I've founded this uh, whole kind of movement, which it is right now. It's really just being steamed by a few of us, a handful of us. Um, Andy is here, but then my colleague, Thosh Collins, he's a Tonot from the Tonata Nation in Arizona. Uh, he's also very much a fitness advocate, fitness specialist. He's a photographer. Many of the beautiful slides you'll see on the presentation are Thosh's work. He travels all over the country taking pictures of Native people in fitness and movement and creating that as a part of his lifestyle. So with that, you know, he, Thosh and I are both board members. I'm a founding board member of an organization, a, na a national nonprofit organization called the Native Wellness Institute. And so from the Institute, Native Paleo is born. Native Paleo is a blend of ancestral food, culture, lifestyle, and fitness. Culture is very much a big part of what Native Paleo has to be. As Native people are tied to the land, are tied to the earth, the sky, the waters, the, is all very much a part of who we are. And so I know that has to be a component of what Native Paleo is, bringing it back to our lifestyles and to our fitness levels. So just thinking back, ancestral food. What is ancestral food? Food that is on the earth, things that were here before, pre-contact, before as Native people lived on this earth, on this continent, throughout from South America all the way up to the tip of Alaska. What kinds of foods were there? We see dried hanging meat, 
coming from the buffalo. I have many friends and you know, neighboring tribes that also are still hunting and going out and getting the buffalo, gathering, getting berries, getting fruits, as some of you shared that you're doing as well. You know, making pemmican. There on those hands show the ingredients of pemmican, very simple, dry meat and dried berries, added with the fat, the tallow, back from that animal. We think of us as native people, how strong, how resilient we were. As beautiful people that we were, we look at the bodies of native people from old pictures, very slender, very fit, strong people. I share that often in workshops that I do. I tell people, you know, if we had to re were relying on the cultures of the, the strength of our ancestors, and we're here today and we're resilient today because of the health of them, the culture of the lifestyles that they had. And it's sad to say where people, native people are today, and if we continue this way. And hearing things in workshops and lectures from yesterday, how our genes, our DNA is built upon the, our ancestors. So knowing that, we need to be strong for the next generations. And looking at our, you know, we have Blackfeet women there uh, cooking over the fire, just very culturally indigenous, how we lived, how we, you know, and worked and had gatherings and we came together as family and tribal groups. And then we've got Thosh there. That's my beautiful colleague Thosh there, lifting a log, looking at native-inspired fitness. So we're reclaiming our fitness levels. Our cultural identity is built in that. So our native dancers, how many people have been to a powwow? Nice. So you know the powwow, that's a lot of exercise. That's a lot of cardiovascular endurance, dancing for hours. Our ceremonies are built around that as well. So things like even hunting. You see a buffalo hunt there. These, these men just went out and they hunted a buffalo. And that's a lot of work as well to, to take care of that hide and all, everything that's part of that. So again, as I said, I'm part of Native Wellness Institute, our nonprofit organization. Uh, Native Paleo began as a branch, or we're a sister organization of Native Wellness Institute. I'm a founding board member. We were founded in 2000. And we serve tribal nations all throughout the United States as well as Canada. And we do a lot of issues dealing with um, more e e emotional things, maybe like healthy leaderships, uh, Native youth leadership. Uh, wellness in the workplace. We have a healthy relationship curriculum as well. So we get grants and funding from government sources, and we bring this type of wellness issues out to communities. And we have tribal groups that bring, that ask for our trainings or for our, come to our presentations. We have a large, large following throughout Native America. But all through that, what I found as an acupuncturist, as a person, you know, practicing functional nutrition, uh, holistic lifestyle coaching, exercise coaching, was that there was a missing link within all of this and with this wellness that I really felt the physical component of it wasn't being fed to where it should be. And so with that, Native Paleo was born from that, realizing I need to bring back, looking at fitness and foods and looking at our lifestyles in that way. So Native Wellness is a cultural and traditional lifestyle model. As you see here, it's, it's built around a medicine wheel. And we use that and we split it into four areas. So it's a holistic approach to living one's life in a very balanced way. So it has four directions as the medicine wheel does. It's about choice and personal growth. And I always like to say is that our wellness and this wellness model is very much a proactive model to bring back our health. So we know it's very holistic, it's in a circle. As native people, we often sit in a circle. We do ceremonies in a circle. The circle tells us about evolving, about connection, and then there's no beginning and no end. So looking at this circle, we see the four quadrants, emotional, spiritual, mental, and physical. So in each of those, we look at what, where is our wellness at? And we can all use this as a tool to look at emotionally. You know, are we balanced there? Are we expressing emotion? Are we having a high self-esteem? Are we sharing with each other? How positive are we are each day? So spiritual connection is also very much a part of native wellness. It has to be there. We often see body, mind, and spirit, but how many of us actually think of spirit and that spiritual connection we have to the earth and to ourself? It's about faith. It's a connection, as we often say, to creator as well. Physical. That was the area where I felt like we had a lot of things, daily fitness, breathing, sleeping, all as a part of that physical model. Um, and then mental. You know, how are we thinking? Are we feeding our brain? Are we taking care of ourselves? So again, that's kind of the, the base of what Native Wellness is about and what we share with communities. And Native Paleo is just becoming a part of that as well. And I like to think of our, one of our tribal leaders from back in the day was Black Elk. Everything the power of the world does is done in a circle. Again, that evolving in a circle. 
So we know as explorers came and they found native people on this earth, they found it on this land here, that we have explorers who said they noted the agility of the women is so great, they can swim over great rivers, burying their children upon one of their arms. So that is how explorers found our people, you know, is that we're very healthy, very vital, very strong. So within that, what happened over time? What happened when we had contact with the white man? We have what we've called, and we had a, a, a quote from a California native that said, we have a broken basket. Here in California, our basketry, we have beautiful basket makers here that make just beautiful baskets, but our basket has come apart from misuse and neglect. So some of the things, you know, that has happened, part of that broken basket is, you know, our, hunt, our people from before, they were hunting and gatherers. You know, they went out in the earth and they hunted, they gathered, we had our native lands, we had our plants, we had vital sources of nutrition for us. We were active, we were healthy, we ran great miles. Uh, and then we had tribal dependents, we had communities. We were built around communities where our earth was. And you know, today, present day, there's numbers of native people that are very much been relocated. We've heard of relocation. So we're often put into tribal, into areas off our tribal land and our ancestral lands into areas where there wasn't good soil, there wasn't hunting grounds, put into areas that was just not a vital source of nutrition or, or vitality for our people. The poverty line for Native Americans is very high. And because of that, we see a lot of poor lifestyle choices with foods and how our, our people are able to eat and sleep and drink, you know, every day. Um, and then, you know, the incidence of disease is much higher in Native people as well. So we look at something from Weston Price, who we all know and familiar with this work. So just looking at seminal dental health. So indigenous food, looking at healthy dentures, you know, teeth and, and then aftermarket food. Many of us are familiar with this work and I just thought we'd add that as well. Seminoles are down in the Florida area. And the reality, what we have, it's funny, right? Someone posted this on my site and I go, it's humorous, yes, but it's sad. You know, that's our six packs. That's a tribal six pack. And it's funny because, I mean, these guys, it is humorous. You can laugh at this. But, it's, but, you know, looking at that, how many of us are familiar with commodity foods and what those are? What U.S. government gave us when we put us on undesirable lands, we had no place to hunt, no place to gather, and now we're also getting com commodities. Commodities are still alive and well, and people are very proud of their monthly source of food sources. As you can see in the picture, they're all carbohydrates. They're all poor sources of nutrition. We look at bags of flour, white flour, white sugar, just uh, cornflakes, rice cakes, all of these things that, you know, I have friends that at Christmas time, they get bags of white flour, a, a baking mix, and then jars of caro syrup. That's for their pancakes. So it's no doubt that the reality, this commod bot is, is a sad reality because we're really looking at, you know, how people are eating and drinking. So that's like our biggest thing is cleaning up diets, taking away processed food, taking away sugars, taking away flours, and it's a journey, that's for sure. But we have people that are starting to make some healthier choices. David Bender was actually in a, a, native, a native magazine, and he's like he said, he finally realized that our main problem is that we are the people who are meant to be hunting and gatherers. Lakotas were hunters, they were vital men, but living in a modern world. In order to change and to cure his wife, who was very sick, he had to change his diets, hers, mine, and that of the kids, and they had to become active. So we do have a movement starting within all of this. People are seeing we need to make a change. We need to go back to our cultural roots. There's women like Valerie Seacrest, who's up there in the Muckleshoots tribe up in Washington. So she's developed these eight tribal these traditional food lessons that are beautiful. Food is at the center of our culture. And as Native people, we gather. Any gathering of Native people, I will guarantee there'll be food. Honor the food web chain. So honoring that food source. We pray as we hunt. We pray as we gather that food. Eat with the seasons. Many of us know, you know, we can eat very well just eating for the seasons. Eat a variety of foods, so many different color sources. Traditional foods are whole foods. So looking at our traditional food sources, those are the best food sources we have. And eating local foods. Wild and organic foods are better for health. So we all know that and believe that. Cook and eat with good intention. How often do we cook and not really give blessings or thanks to the food that we have? It's like sitting at the table and giving thanks to that food. Bring your ancestors to the market with you. Let them help you make those food choices. 
And Native Paleo was brought out through all of this movement and looking at where do we start, where do we get a good start. So kind of jumping onto the whole paleo primal food movement, ancestral health. Uh, so Andy and I, she's been really help, a big helping with um, collaborating and giving me a lot of power and steam with this and just being my, my uh, backbone throughout all this as well is like we started a Facebook page right now. I think I have over 2,040 people on there. There are native people throughout all over US and Canada and it's really exciting because we get new things happening all the time. Our, uh, face, our website went live last um, month so we've got nativepaleo.com as well. So that's really exciting. The goal is to be fit and healthy. There's Thosh again, I mean, a perfect example of a healthy young man, you know, lifting weights. These pictures as well was a native paleo um, seminar that I held in San Diego last December. So we had people outside doing functional fitness. We were testing, we were showing doing squats. We were doing sit-ups, holding planks, you know, doing things to be very fit, to see how fit we were, gauging that, and then also talking about nutrition and how do we look at healthy lifestyles. And this is Nathan. Nathan is a, an elder. He's Elam. He's from uh, up in the North Bay area. And he, he is what a video that we did of him. So we go ahead and show just a minute or half second of this. He's a Pomo so tribal leader. So thank you, Nathan, leader. for being here. <laughs> really appreciate your, your contribution here. Um, so please describe your tribe and how you came to this way of eating. Uh, my tribe is, they're, they're the Pomo people from Wake County, Northern California. They live on the edge of the, the east side of the lake, known as the water people. Um, my way of eating, um, traditional ways, is realizing that for my health and my life, that I work a long time for my people. So what changes have you seen within yourself since you started eating a native paleo way? The native paleo way has taught me that the way I feel right now with science, I have the energy, I have more win in running, um, more preparation for ceremonies. Um, right now I feel good, I feel healthy, I feel strong. You know, from the past I was overweight, lazy, no energy, no strength, cannot fulfill my ceremonies and so on because I just didn't have it. Thank you. And I'm going to add something in here. Would you share with us um, the Biggest Loser competition at your work? And I want to say too, so his interviews on our website, Nathan was part of a Biggest Loser campaign on his, in his tribe and through their uh, community health department. He lost over 47 pounds in just a very short time, just completely changing his diet, eating healthier, eating a native paleo type diet as we know it. So that was like a huge, you know, kudos to him and where he was. So some things that we have in the horizon. So we have our online interactive food medicine wheel for each tribe that we have on our website so that tribes can go on and start naming what are their traditional superfoods? What are they have in their area? Then we have our tribal superfoods, that's part of our campaign. We are looking for funding for trainings for tribes and groups without funds and creating more of an online presence. You know, I would like to create more blogs and pieces, um, just looking at what we have out there in the greater, I'm just trying to be a part of the greater paleo primal community. And also mass distribution of our ancestral food wheel posters. So if you have those posters, if we can get them into the hands of people that could share them with tribal communities in your area, that'd be awesome, turning them on to native paleo. So there's our beautiful food wheel. We're gonna have a table out front by registration so that you could you know, purchase these and they're all just going donating back to the funds for Native Paleo. And just again, the tribal superfoods just based on looking at scientific data that shows the nutrient composition of selected traditional foods, how much richer they were and nutritionally vital they were for our people because they're from the land from where we're living. And I'm asking you, what are your local tribe superfoods? What do you eat in your area? What are those foods that you're gathering, hunting, you know, that you have, those foods that are vital to your health? And to finish, I just wanted to dedicate this, this prayer that Marietta King, she's Blackfeet, what she said. So if we can 
you know, just look at this. This is a prayer and dedication to na Native people, First Nations, and Indigenous people everywhere. May we live in joy, humbleness, compassion, wisdom, and companionship with a dancing heart and the fullness of love that is driven by our strength and courage for our children's children yet to be born, that we shall be free of disease and stand in good health in our heart, soul, mind, and physical body. Thank you so much. Aho. Thank you. That was really great. Thank you. I think we're out of time for questions, but I'm sure they, these two ladies would be happy to... to